Part of me thought I would never make a video like this again, but another part of me realizes that this is a topic I address almost every day. The first time I did this video, I was in undergrad. I had my ridiculous scene kid, Justin Bieber swoop of the hair, and I was a different person. And that girl had a story, and that's still my story, but it's evolved a lot since then. It means so much to me that a brand like Herbal Essences was willing to support our community in such a big way because it's a company I've been using my whole life. Like since I was that shy, crying girl in the corner who everyone called a freak and who ate lunch in the bathroom alone. And now I'm this proud person. And it's these little things from my childhood that I realized were giving me little ounces of love this whole time. It feels very full circle in a way. I used to collect the bottles and I would, you know, line them up in a rainbow in my room when they were empty, when they came in different colors. I guess that was also a sign I was gay. To help celebrate the 50 year anniversary of the Stonewall Riots, Herbal Essences planted a blooming garden wall during New York City Pride where people could dedicate flowers to members of the LGBTQIA community. Our community is so beautiful and full of life, so the wall was a beautiful art piece that spoke deeply to me. I dedicated my flower to my girlfriend for obvious reasons, but especially because of how our relationship has grown and blossomed. Herbal Essences donated the Garden Wall Flower Bouquets to the Alley Forney Center, the largest LGBT community center helping homeless youth in the United States, and compost with Garbage Goddess, so that the community and flowers would continue to flourish. You know, I'm now in my mid-twenties and I live in New York City and I have a partner who I love and I was always a weird kid growing up. I feel like everyone says that, but I really was, I, I never fit in. I first realized I was gay when I was 13 years old. I never had a crush on a guy, I never imagined, you know, what my future husband's going to be like and playing house. I thought I would, you know, move to Africa and live in an RV to work with gorillas and live with my sister instead of a husband. But yeah, I was always just a really self-conscious kid. I was overweight and I wasn't popular and I was really shy and timid. My best friend and my only friend in elementary school was a guy named David and we pretended to be spies. And our secret headquarters was inside my closet. Ironic. But anyway, I was 13 when I realized I was gay. And I bottled it up. It wasn't necessarily the being attracted to women part that terrified me. It was that, oh my god, not something else to make me different. Like, I just wanted one thing where I could be normal and be like every other kid. And this was just something else I felt pushed me further away. And what made it really difficult at the time is there was no YouTube. There were no how to come out videos. There were no my coming out story videos. So all I had was a bunch of questions and absolutely no answers. And absolutely no one to relate to who had these same questions. Eventually I started making friends outside of my school. I went to a drama camp and I just got really involved in the arts outside of my school. I was a teenager when I had my first kiss with a girl. She was um, a few years older, so she already had a car and I was walking her back to her car after she came to my house. We looked at each other, you know that look where you know you want to kiss each other but you don't know who's going to make the move or how it's going to happen or you're someone unsure if the other person wants to do it or you do but you want them to make it. You know, it's just, it's... Until finally she looked at me and she said, when are you going to grow a pair? And I kissed her. To me, being part of the LGBTQI plus community means Resilience, it means hope, it means pride, it means love, and it means everybody has a place. I remember the first time I went to a pride parade when I was 15 and I cried because it was the first time I felt like I belonged somewhere. It was the first time I saw an actual community that I identified with, not just hearing of a person who's queer here or there or online, but real in the flesh, like queer people, many of us. And for, for the first time I felt okay. I felt like things were really going to be okay. What I love the most about the LGBTQIA plus community is we are so resilient. No matter who or what tries to knock us down, we come back and we come back more beautiful and stronger. Flowers grow back after they're stepped on and so did I. 
and so can you and all of us in this amazing rainbow of a community together. When other shrine pushes down, we keep our heads up, we keep our hearts full, and we keep our arms open. There's no other community like that. Never in a million years did I think the shy girl with the wheelie backpack would be speaking at the 50th commemoration ceremony for Stonewall, or have an online following, or have a community of people that I call family. If I had to describe my coming out story in three words, it would be me crying a lot. It was very lonely and I felt very isolated. So fast forward to my senior year of high school. I went to a really small private religious school. And when I say small, I mean small, like graduating class of 42 kids. Small. And one day a girl in my grade outed me. Within five minutes, the entire school knew. Five minutes after that, the girl in my grade who I thought was my friend pushed me against the wall and threatened to beat me up if I ever looked at her with my gayness. I was eating alone in the bathroom. I was miserable and the worst part was, especially after that altercation with that girl in the hallway, I was called into the office because the school knew about it. There were security cameras and they saw what happened, but the second they found out it was because I was gay and that was making a student uncomfortable, it was swept under the rug. It was okay for me to be threatened. It was okay for me to be harassed. It was okay for me to be assaulted because I was gay. I was the first person to be out at my school. And that sucked, but I got through it. It got better and I eventually left my small private religious school and I went to college and I was very open with my struggles on the internet as I was going through them, but never did I imagine to have a following like the one I have now. You know, I was just this shy kid that would make covers with her ukulele on the internet and, you know, try to stay in her lane and now I don't apologize for who I am because that's what I needed when I was younger. I needed someone who was not sorry for being who they were. I needed someone who said, hey, who I am is beautiful, who I am is wonderful, and so are you. I sometimes get asked, you know, if you could change your life, if you can make it so you weren't gay, would you? And not for a second. If anything, I would make myself gayer. But I do still come out every day, you know? There's stereotypes and stigmas attached with what someone who is gay should look like, what they shouldn't look like, and you know, we're all growing and evolving every day. You know, I have friends who one day identified as bi, and then they identified as gay, and then identified as queer, and all of those identities are valid. I was just talking to a friend about this the other day, how coming out and labels, it's almost like shoe sizes. When I was younger, I was a size four, and now I'm a size six. But all because I'm a size six now doesn't mean I was never a size four, you know? Your journey is always valid. And it blows me away, and I'm so honored and proud and humbled to see this new generation of LGBTQAI plus youth and, and that I get to help the new generation like my friends Elle and Jesse and I'm saying new generation like I'm their father when we're only a couple years apart, but you know. Being part of this community has really shaped my life. Being gay isn't all of who I am, but it's a part of me that I'm really proud of. I'm also an adventurer, I'm also goofy, I'm also someone's girlfriend, I'm also people's friends, I'm also a cat mom and I have all of these facets of who I am and if all of those parts of me are beautiful and appreciated then being gay should be too and it is. It's really comforting to work with a brand that supports the LGBTQIA plus community not only during Pride Month. You know we have to be proud of who we are 365 days of the year. Pride is not only a celebration, it is our resilience, it is our fight. It is our courage, it is our strength, it is our light on our darkest days, and it is the reason why we're here today. And you know, the LGBTQIA plus community is very much like flowers. There's all different colors and varieties and shapes, and they are all beautiful, and they are all strong. And you know, flowers grow back even after they're stepped on, and so did I, and so can you, and so can our entire community, and that's what we are doing. We are coming back, and we are blooming and blossoming. I used to think my story didn't matter. I used to think no one wanted to hear it. But every voice matters. Every story matters. So thank you for listening to mine. And thank you for being a part of mine. And your story matters too. Even if you're just telling it to yourself right now, or if you've told everyone, be proud of who you are. Be proud of how far you've come. Because you're still growing. And you are going to blossom.